and Whitney J-58 engines big enough to power the Queen Mary launch its 140,000 pound body to the edge of space. The bullet from a high-powered rifle leaves the barrel at about 3,000 feet per second. On a routine mission, the Blackbird travels faster, 3,200 feet per second, for up to 90 minutes at a time. No matter how serene it may look, this kind of speed requires unyielding precision. You know, Mach 3, boom. The turn radius is something like 100 miles, and they have all these critical fuel problems and, and other stuff. And so it's not a very spontaneous experience. These are carefully planned, choreographed missions. With the thunderous clap of a sonic boom, the Blackbird hurtles through the frigid atmosphere, leaving a fiery tail of shock diamonds in its wake. At 2,200 miles per hour, the aircraft becomes superheated from the friction created as the air rushes by. And indicating Mach 3.0 at this time. When you go Mach 3, the amount of heat that the whole airframe, everything experiences all this heat, and nothing that they have at the store works. You know, there's no paint, no rubber, nothing. You know, metals, uh, plastics, all, all this stuff is useless. And they just had to go through so many contortions to, to make every single part of the plane tolerant of these extreme temperatures. Temperature affects everything on this airplane. The average person probably is not cognizant of that fact. But the faster you go, the harder things get. The Lockheed jet is nine-tenths titanium. And when they build it, the CIA uses a phantom company to buy the material from the world's largest supplier, the Soviet Union. In flight, the titanium skin reaches 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, causing it to expand by more than half a foot. This heat-induced expansion posed a real challenge to the Skunk Works team. When in design, they found that the aircraft was heated and then cooled, then the titanium skin would buckle and not return to shape. And they found by longitudinally corrugating the wing and fuselage parts of the aircraft, then the aircraft could go through the heating cycle, cool back down, and return to shape. One of the puzzles of extreme heat was never really solved. Sealants for the fuel tanks. They never came up with a polymer that would seal the joints in the skin panels that hold the fuel in. So the blackbirds sit on the ground and weep. That seems silly. You can look, oh, these stupid guys back in the 60s didn't know what they were doing. There's still no plastic, you know, that can get to 700F and not turn into a burnt hot dog oxide. Once at altitude, the heated skin stretches, sealing the aircraft's fuel cells. In its 30 years of service, only 150 aviators have qualified to fly the SR. It is an elite fraternity. Prior to every Blackbird mission, 36 hours are devoted to prepare men and machine for flight. One of the most valued traits is maturity. Lieutenant Colonel Mike Finan is 43. All who enter the program must meet one fundamental requirement. They must be married. Lean forward, sir. Most importantly, they must be physically fit. At altitude, even a simple toothache can lead to blackouts. One, two, one, fifteen. Coming down, sir. The two-man crew is essential to success. Soon, pilot and reconnaissance systems officer, or RSO, will be traveling faster than a speeding bullet while operating some of the most sophisticated intelligence apparatus ever built. They are, in effect, 
the blackbird's central nervous system. Two brains, two pairs of eyes, two sets of hands. Without them, this mass of metal and electronics could not function. Something that's, that's different about flying the SR-71 is the absolute and total man-machine integration. People talk about strapping an airplane on, but I don't believe you strapped an airplane on until you snapped your spurs uh, in, into the ejection seat and you hooked up your life support hoses and you've been given that responsibility. Before flight, each of the SR's huge power plants requires a jump start from two 454 cubic inch Chevy engines. The wine is deafening, and the steaming tarmac reeks of JP-7 seeping from the plane's unsealed fuel tanks. So much fuel is lost prior to launch that the Blackbird takes off with nearly dry tanks. The SR must join with a waiting tanker just minutes into flight. Slowing this trisonic jet to match the tanker's subsonic speed is anything but easy. It is a very difficult task for the pilots. That is one of the things that washed people out of the program more than any other part of the, um, um, of the regime. United uh, 382 Salt Lake. You always breathe a sigh of relief when you uh, feel the uh, boom kick you off and you know that you're full and you can go again. 15 minutes and 80,000 pounds of fuel later, the Blackbird is ready to retrieve images from halfway around the Earth. Going about 15, back to the 70, looking for left turn heading 2, 2, 3. 